Detroit Lions tight end Sam Laporta could be the key to winning your dynasty leagues. All that and more this episode of Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. This episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the App Store and sign up with promo code Locked On to get your first deposit doubled up to $100. That's a fantastic deal. Go, go play Underdog Fantasy. We absolutely love it. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can follow her on Twitter at Kate Majuk. Kate, today we are talking about some tight ends that you should go out and acquire in your dynasty leagues if you are rebuilding. And I cannot wait to talk about this first <laughs> tight end. Who is it for you? It's got to be Sam Laporta, tight end for the Detroit Lions. Now, I know uh, he's no Dalton Kincaid, right? Like Dalton Kincaid is the one that has been dominating headlines all off season long. Everybody's so hyped on Dalton Kincaid, but why would I draft Dalton Kincaid as the tight end six when I could just draft Sam Laporta at tight end 12? I'm just saying 22 years old, six, three, 245 pounds uh, has the draft capital drafted in the second round uh, by the Detroit Lions, who, you know, I, I think uh, it, it was a great fit, right? The the team moved on from another uh, tight end in TJ Hawkinson. Mm -hmm. uh, and now they get a, a asset that I think kind of perfectly fits the Billies on the smaller side. Um, but man, oh man, that athleticism, Marcus, is off the charts for the tight end position. Like, 600 plus receiving yards in each of his last two seasons with the Iowa Hawkeyes. Um, you look at just his overall like skill set and his ability to like force missed tackles and, and ability after the catch. Like, why would you not be all in on Sam Laporta, it, especially just considering the you know, the number of, of playmakers that they're adding into this offense, it complements that that yards after the catch ability so much. Because once you get the ball in his hands, you know, coverage is going to be spread far and wide when you're trying to cover Jamison Williams, Amonra St. Brown, Jameer Gibbs. Like, it, there's, there's going to be, a, a, I think, a whole open field here for Sam Laporta once he gets that ball in his hands. This is going to be a perfect fit, and I'm so excited. He's gotten all the training camp hype, and I think he's a really nice bet based on his his skill set. That he's he's not going to be you know getting the George Kittle treatment right, where you have to worry about him blocking on yeah. on every given snap. Like you know, fifty three point one uh, PFF run blocking grade, not fantastic. You know where he excelled? It was that it was that receiving grade. Uh, let the man run the open field, please. Oh, please. So beautiful. I've got like tears in my eyes right now. This is so great. Uh, so let me start with this. Fantasy football should be fun, right? Like that's the whole, we're trying to have some fun here. I want to have players on my team that are fun to root for. There might not be a player in the NFL right now that I'm more excited about than Sam Laporta. So th that's just a check for me already. But you hit so many of the things that make him such a valuable fantasy asset is he gets open all the time. He catches everything. And he was the best tight end in this class after the catch. Those are all three, three things that matter a lot when it comes to fantasy production. And the reason why we like him so much in a rebuild mode is because, number one, he's cheap. You can get him outside of the top 10 tight ends right now. He's going in as tight end 12. And I think he's going to be somebody who, as the season goes on, his role kind of grows, right? And again, if you're in a rebuild mode, typically the, the idea is to acquire talent but try to stay at the lower end of your wins and losses so you can keep adding talent, right? And I think mm -hmm. Laporta is going to help you do that. I also just won't be shocked if he's like 60 catches for 750 yards and seven touchdowns this year because the dude is a baller. He was so good on that Iowa team last year that was so devoid of talent. He was the only player on that offense that was worth anything. And without him, that might have been the worst offense in the history of college football. 
this guy is amazing. I, I again, I want him on my dynasty teams. Yeah, it just so athletic, just so much. Um, I, I think upside based on on what he offers, and, and like like you said, I, I think that's a really nice point about the fact that like we know rookie tight ends will take some time to to develop. Generally, now maybe we see you know a a fast track for Sam Laporta because. You know, I, I think his role is primary, primarily going to be as a receiver sure. um, now. Like, so, so maybe, you know, a lot of that, that sort of slow development comes from those intricacies of like the blocking schemes, but maybe we don't see that, that hiccup, but in case we do, maybe he won't get off to too hot a start for your fantasy teams. And, and you can keep that, that draft capital uh, in the bucket. The other thing I will say is right now you're seeing a pretty monster difference in terms of price between Dalton Kincaid and Sam Laporta. Kincaid is tight end seven going 77th overall. Sam Laporta tight end 12 going at 118 overall. Their draft capital wasn't all that different. I believe uh, Dalton Kincaid went at pick 25 and Sam Laporta was picked 34. But I know just across from a couple of teams, I can use the Cowboys, the Cowboys had Sam Laporta as their number one tight end in this class. They thought he was the best guy. They thought there was a chance that they could get him a little bit later in the draft. But I, I don't think the league viewed Dalton Kincaid and Sam Laporta's talent to be all that great. But in your dynasty drafts right now, you're seeing a massive gap that I think is just far too wide. Far too wide. And I, I mean, like you talk about that, that difference, right? So um, we've got, Sam Laporta going right around 117. You've got Kincaid going around 76. That's a 41 spot difference. So that's that's more than three rounds later. Which so maybe instead bonkers. of absolutely bonkers. So like you know, for comparison, it, players that you might be passing up on um, in order to draft Dalton Kincaid might be a a George Pickens, a Jamison Williams, a you know, wild, yeah, like that. That's the kind of like tier player or a Damian Pierce even going in that similar range. Like give me Damian Pierce plus Sam Laporta over Dalton Kincaid any day. Yeah. And I think the, if you want to go out and get Sam Laporta and you've got, let's say Darren Waller, who I really like, and I think D Darren Waller is going to have a really nice season. Darren Waller's 31 years old, uh, hasn't been able to stay healthy. Now is playing with the new quarterback. You can you can trade Darren Waller plus or Darren Waller and get Sam Laporta plus right now in your dynasty leagues. And if you're a rebuilding team, Darren Waller is going to do nothing for you, right? He doesn't have a lot of long-term value. Um, yep. In fact, I think his value could fall off a cliff this year if he's unable to stay healthy. That's a move that I'm making all day long. I'm even trading Evan Ingram. I, I could trade Evan Ingram straight up for Sam Laporta. I would I'd just do that in a heartbeat. Just give me Sam Laporta. I want him on my team. Now, give me your your thoughts on when is the best time to trade for Sam Laporta? Like, we now, know where he's going. And, and Okay. so Because, I honestly, I think he is one of these players. As soon as we see him in a preseason game, I don't know when the Lions play, whether it's tonight. I don't think it's tonight or uh, Friday or Saturday. I think the moment people see him on the field with Jared Goff catching passes out of the slot, they're going to figure out, oh, I, I see it now. I, I don't want to wait. I want to go get him right now. I think that's fair. Let's look at a, a couple of quick trades. Now, um, I think the market is is pretty intriguing for Sam Laporta. So um, Sam Laporta in a 2024 first round pick for DK Metcalf in a third. Oh, I'll take the Laporta side all day. And it, I believe this is a, a tight end premium. Even more um, so, yep. Yeah, Tony Pollard for Zay Flowers and Sam Laporta. That would depend a little bit on roster construction, but if you're rebuilding, I want Zay Flowers and Sam Laporta. Same. Uh, Jonathan Mingo for Sam Laporta. Get out of here. Get out. Yeah. Go away. Yeah. No. Sam yeah. Laporta show, baby. Yeah. Go get Sam Laporta. One of the most fun players in fantasy football right now. Okay. Let's talk about another rookie tight end that I'm really excited about that's not named Sam Laporta. Next. This episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. August is here, and you know what that means. It is the official start of Fantasy Football Drafting Month. Get championship ready for your home league by trying out best ball on Underdog Fantasy. All you have to do is one live snake draft, 
No waivers, no trades. Underdog sets your best lineup every week. You can try it out now with Underdog's Best Ball Mania Tournament. It is the largest fantasy football contest ever. It's back and it's even bigger than ever with $15 million of total prizes up for grabs, including an absurd $3 million going to the winner. Last year, the winner drafted their team in July. So don't wait around. Get your teams in right now. Draft multiple teams. It's, it's so much fun. Visit underdogfantasy.com or you can find them in the App Store. And make sure you sign up with promo code locked on, all one word, to get your first deposit doubled up to $100. That is underdog fantasy promo code locked on, all in one word, where we want to draft with you. So send us some links. Use that to deposit locked on again. I wanted to make some underdog teams with you. It's so much fun. It's an absolute blast. Go draft again, underdogfantasy.com. All right, Kate, let's talk uh, about some other tight ends that we are interested in in some rebuilding leagues. And for me, that's Luke Musgrave. Uh, I'm going to give you the four first. What are your thoughts on Musgrave going into the season? Musgrave, very interesting prospect. So, you know, coming out of Oregon State, you know, athletic absolute like freak of an athlete. Like we talk about, I was just hyping up Sam Laporta, like Luke Musgrave, you look at him, he's six, six, five fit or two fifty three. 53, um, you know, ginormous huge. hands, yep. huge hands, um, ran uh, almost just as fast, a, a 40 yard dash, 36 inch vert, um, 10 Which, foot, five inch broad jump, like all coming all off an ACL injury injury, by the way, like it wasn't even a full month removed from an ACL injury insane um now we haven't had a lot of of like opportunities to see what he could really do like just if he had uh you know either you know full health or you know there there was the covid like it was just kind of a bad bad you know circumstance under which to evaluate luke musgrave but i think from like a tools perspective i think he's got it all now He's also got the draft capital drafted in the second round by the Green Bay Packers um, has some opportunity, I think, in a really young receiving room to carve himself out a role. And he's been hyped up endlessly from training camp. So let's hear your your overall pitch on why he's the real deal, because I I think that's the hesitancy. I think we've seen flashes from Luke Musgrave. But do you believe that he can he can continue with those flashes on a consistent basis why do you think we can i'm not sure that we can um he's mm -hmm. never really been a consistent player he's been a flash player uh but some of the flashes i'm telling you kate are just unreal and, and this is why I'm, I'm willing to gamble on him because the ceiling as much as i love sam laporta musgrave's ceiling is higher just because he's bigger and i think when he's fully healthy he's more athletic and he's more dynamic down the field there's just not many players in the league that are this massive and are as fluid as he is. And we're seeing a little bit at, at Green Bay Packers training camp, some of these big over routes that he can run, some of these things down the seam. It's just the ceiling here. And the other thing that I like is he can't block. And I know that sounds counterproductive. <laughs> when you typically you want your tight end to block so they could be on the field more often. Okay, they couldn't block you. He couldn't block you coming off the edge. Like he's just not a blocker <laughs> at all, which means his role is really going to be just be a receiver, right? I want you to be the guy making plays down the field. And outside of Christian Watson, there's really no other passing attack option that I feel great about. So could he be like the the target number two on this offense by the end of the year? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think that's a very interesting point. 54.3 uh, uh, run blocking grade in his final season. Um, and like I, I mentioned his his height. He's ginormous. He's 6'6". Six, six. He's only 253 pounds, which when you consider that like the, you know, it sounds big. He's, but when he you looks consider skinny. that height, uh, wait, yeah. yes, it's it's a smaller frame. His BMI, uh, I think, is, is the right word. It is yes, BMI. It yeah, not not great for what you would consider like a, a solid run blocking uh, or pass blocking tight end. Like it, not his role. But, like that's not going to be his role. But I I think the fact that the Packers were willing to draft him here indicates that they're not planning for that to become his role. Because like it. You know, investing high draft capital, I think, in a guy that um, you you don't have expectations to, uh, you know, necessarily be a, a 
you know, a full-time blocker for you. That tells me that you're planning to utilize him as a receiver. And guess what? He's going to be the tallest receiver on the, uh, on the field running consistent routes at six, six. And the other thing is I think the Packers see the vision here, because if you look at his college production, he was four years at Oregon state, the best season he ever had Kate ever was 22 catches for 304 yards and one touchdown. That was his best college season ever. Two total touchdowns in his career. They're not drafting him based on production. They're drafting him based on the ceiling and what he could potentially become. And it's just, if he hits his ceiling, and he's the the player that I think a lot of people think he could be, we're talking about like somebody who is in that same tier as Mark Andrews and Kyle Pitts and I don't even want to say the name Travis Kelsey because people go wild, but that's mm-hmm. the upside here. And the price is so cheap right now. It's 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 tight end 18 going behind people like Cole Komet and Dalton Schultz and Michael Mayer. I would just, I, I'm perfectly fine gambling on the upside here at tight end 18. Yeah. I, I think that's a very interesting point. Honestly, what's, what's beautiful about all these guys, Marcus, the, the, you know, draft capital, the uh, assets that you need to trade for these guys, like you can take a shot on a few of them. And and that's what I would recommend is like taking three of these guys, maybe two rookies or one rookie and two second year players or however you want to do it. If you're rebuilding, I'm trying to move off the Evan Ingrams and the Darren Waller types and try to stash as many of these players as possible. Absolutely. And, you know, for a lot of these unproven assets, they're going to be values uh, on, on the trade market. And yes. you just need one of them to hit, right? And All that's, I, I think, the approach, if you don't have one of these elite tight ends, uh, I, I think your approach has to be taking as many shots as possible. And I, I think finding these values is the way to do it. So if you don't go out and get one of these rookie tight ends, whether it's Musgrave or Laporta or Michael Mayer or Kincaid, are there some second and third year options out there that are maybe a little bit intriguing? If you're rebuilding, we get to those names next. All right, Kate, let's name a couple players who are not rookies this year that are intriguing to us at the tight end position. If you're rebuilding your first name is Greg Dulcich. Why are you in on Dulcich here in year two? Being drafted on average as the tight end 11 um, going into his second season was so freaking productive as a rookie, yeah. Marcus. I feel yeah. like it's like very um, had one of the most like low key productive rookie seasons for a tight end than we've seen in some time. Um, didn't play until week six. Scored eleven or more fantasy points in half of his games that he played last year. Um, you know, there's lots of receiving options. We mentioned the injuries on yesterday's episode, talking about Jerry Judy and the the potential opportunity for pass catchers here in in Denver. Um, you know. Alberto, I think we're we're good. That's not a thing. But I mean, Greg Dulcich definitely in his rookie season, <laughs> definitely not a thing. We wanted it to be a thing. Oh, wow. um, yeah. But four four hundred eleven receiving yards, two touchdowns on fifty five targets. Um, that was only in ten games, Marcus. On a per game basis, ranked thirteenth in targets per game, um, fifth among all tight ends in targeted air yards per game. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like the opportunity was there. And when he was on the field, Russell Wilson was throwing to him. Uh, Like, I I think there's a lot of, um, you know, potential upside here for the Denver Broncos offense in general, just because, you know, as a community, we're kind of low on this offense. Um, And I, I think it's trending up for sure. But Greg Dulcich, based on what we've seen in, in, you know, his rookie season in that limited opportunity, I, I think we should expect good things moving forward because uh, he, he blew yeah. the doors off the wall yes, last year. And we saw some of the quotes from Sean Payton about how the previous coaching staff had no idea how to use Greg Dulcich. And they had to kind of throw some of the the basically what he did as a rookie away because it was just so foreign to them. It sounds like Sean Payton's got a role for Greg Dulcich as this joker tight end. And remember, Sean Payton has got some experience with these tight ends, whether it's you know Jimmy Graham or some of the other guys that they've had with the Saints. He's always had a productive tight end. So that's certainly a player that I'm keeping an eye on. I- I'm just going to mention Trey McBride, who was a second-round pick last year. In a lot of ways, I think he's like the discount version of Sam Laporta. Like if you can't go get the Sam Laporta, get – Uh, Trey McBride, because it was somebody who was a Mackey Award winner during the 2021 college football season, 
amazing after the catch catch, but he's also one of these slot tight ends that doesn't really block. He's Zach Ertz is coming off a major knee injury. He's obviously not going to be part of the long-term plan. I think Trey McBride could easily get, you know, 80 to 90 targets in this offense. He's, you know, again, put him in the open field, let him make plays after the catch. And he costs you nothing right now. He's, he's being drafted as tight end uh, 19, only 23 years old. I'm going to gamble on somebody with that draft capital, with that potential target share and with his overall athleticism. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of potential upside. Now, after his his rookie season, I think I would have liked to see maybe a bigger discount on on Trey McBride based on that production, um, you know, just among the rookie tight ends, like across the board, you know, was ranked quite poorly. Um, it but didn't I, matter I, what metric you but were I can tell you, really looking at. In some of my dynasty leagues, he's available. He's just sitting there in free agency because he did nothing last year. It, again, some of these are shorter bench leagues, but I, I don't care. He's it costs you nothing. A couple again, a couple trades really quickly from Dynasty League football. Romeo Dubs for Trey McBride in the tight end premium league. Yeah, I'll take the shot on Trey McBride. Trey McBride for a third round pick. I mean, it's 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 yeah. nothing. Uh, Trey McBride bride for twenty five waiver dollars. Like there, you can basically get him for free right now. And I, I, I get your point. Like I'd like to see him being ranked like wide receiver or tight end 22 or 23, but I'm not sure that it matters. That's yeah, that's totally fair. Um, looking at, uh, it seems like, so there's sometimes a disconnect between, you know, dynasty startup ADP and, and the market for a player. It mm-hmm. seems like the market's actually a little bit lower than you might expect for the tight end 19. Interesting. So again, just our overall strategy here, if you're rebuilding and you're looking at this tight end position, whether it's a tight end premium league or not, we recommend trying to load up on this rookie class, which was, I I think, by all accounts, a really good tight end class. Grab two of these guys, whether it's Sam Laporta and Musgrave or Laporta and Michael Mayer, grab two of those and then try to grab, you know, a second or third year player that has some draft capital, whether it's Stolcich whether it's Trey McBride and move off some of those other tight ends that just have kind of that not tight end. You know, they, they don't have the upside to be a top three or top five dynasty tight end, uh, but they're aging. We mentioned people like Evan Ingram. Um, we mentioned Darren Waller. There's, there's a lot of names in that, that range that you could trade stack up these tight ends. Uh, any final thoughts before we head out? No, I, I think I'm going to go make some trades. That's yeah. my thought. We want go get. I was going to say go out and trade for Sam Laporta. I was going to go out and try to trade. Unless for you're Sam in Laporta. my leagues, then you are not. I, you are the not. Problem, doing the that. problem is, is I already own Sam Laporta in all my leagues, so I don't need to go out and trade for him. <laughs> uh, that is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every day. Every dayers, we'll be back tomorrow to answer your Twitter questions. So make sure that you send them into us at Marcus underscore Mosier eight, uh, at Kate Maju. Uh, Check us out on YouTube. We post shows every single day over there. We are free and available on all platforms. We want to thank you for, for listening to the show, and we'll see you guys right back here tomorrow for more Dynasty football content.